Shalom, shalom, sisters. First and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory and praises to the Most High God of Israel. Call on Yahweh, passion me, I shine. And I am going to be going into this alms of salvation issue. We're going to get into different accounts that I've been studying on the different forefathers and foremothers that gave alms, how important alms is, and how it can save us. It can save our lives if we give alms, of course, in sincerity and truth. First, I want to get the definition of alms. So this is the definition of alms, just regular Google. Money or food given to poor people. Then you got different synonyms. You got gifts, donations, charity, you know, kind of contributions. All these things, all these things are alms. Charity. This is a good thing in the sight of the Most High. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 33. Sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. So that's a mighty precept because in this life, money is glorified. Money is, you know, idolized. It's put before the Most High. And the Most High is saying basically, that we need to be able to freely give, whether it's money, whether it's, you know, even in the spirit, even in the spirit, you spiritual arms, you know, praying for a sister, fasting for a sister. But, you know, in the context of just money, we should be able to not have an attachment like, oh man, well, we can't be stingy with the money, okay? If we know, you know, sisters are struggling or whatever the case may be. You know, we should want to be merciful, want to show that love and compassion because it could always be us. It could always be us. And sometimes it is us, too. And we're going to get deeper into that. But that is a treasure that we can obtain in heaven. In heaven, the alms and the good works that we do now, even in general, is going to be us storing up our treasure in heaven, most high willing, securing our spot in the kingdom, most high willing. So that's a beautiful thing, and no man can take that from us. You know, money can be stolen. Somebody can steal your money at your bank account and hack you, get scammed, or whatever the case may be. But giving alms, nobody can take that from you. Nobody can take that from you. And it's a pleasing thing in the sight of the most high. And this is. The B.O.B. definition of alms. Shall I put the wrong thing? Come on. This is G1656. And it reads, Mercy, pity, as exhibited in giving alms. Charity. Look. A donation to the poor. So all praise to the most high. Alms is a beautiful thing. Alms is a way that we show pity and mercy to our people. You know, especially, especially in this truth. You know, the sister, you know, she you know, she's going hard, she's trying to endure. You know, why not show the most high's mercy through you being an honorable vessel, more willing. You know, and helping that sister out, blessing her with, you know, a little change, you know, you know, whatever the case may be, for whatever they need it for. But I'm going to get this precept right here. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So us being merciful, us being willing to give, being cheerful when we're giving, we shall obtain mercy. For the most high, we know we need mercy. We need mercy because we go off every single day. Every single day, we have a wicked thought. We may say the wrong things. We might whatever, but we need mercy from you. How about you, Meow Shy? This is blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So we got to be merciful to one another. We got to be merciful to one another. And let me get this. It's all right. 
So like yeah. But yes, it's very, very, very important that we're willing to release these ties to money. Release these ties to money because it's it's nothing for the most high to give it back to you. And most I always make sure that we have exactly what we need in due season. So we gotta keep that in mind too. This is Sarah 7 and verse 10. Be not faint hearted when thou makest thy prayer and neglect not to give alms. So we cannot neglect to give alms. We can't do it. We can't neglect alms. We can't say, yeah, I've been praying. I've been fasting three days a week. I've been doing this. I've been doing But you're neglecting alms. Alms is important to you. Alms is important to you. So let me get this. Sarah chapter 12. In verse 3, there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. So the Lord said, there's no good that can come to them that giveth no alms. That's deep. That's deep right there. If no good can come to you, you don't get no alms. That's serious business. And then, of course, verse 4, give to the godly man and help not a sinner. So, of course, we want to be helping people that are striving to please the most high. They are truly enduring in this thing because, you know, you got wicked people out here. And they are blaspheming the word of the most high. They don't care to hear the words of life. They don't care to serve the most high in sincerity and truth. We want to help the godly man. According to thus says the Lord. So I'm gonna get next precept 17. Book of Sirach, chapter 17, and verse 21. But the Lord, being gracious and knowing his workmanship, neither left nor forsake them, but spared them. So the Most High is gracious. The Most High is gracious unto us. He's brought us. He has brought us into this marvelous truth, into this light, giving us a chance at obtaining the kingdom. Most High, willing, He never left us or forsook us, even when we were wicked in the world of who knows what. He spared us. Verse twenty-two: The alms of a man is as a signet with him. And he will keep the good deeds of man as the apple of the eye and give repentance to his sons and daughters. So let's look up what a signet is. Let's look up what a signet is. Because this is what it alms is. It's the alms of a man is as a signet. This is a signet. A small seal. Usually one set in a ring. Used instead of or with a signature to give authentication to an official document. So a signet is a seal. When we give alms, the Most High is putting that spiritual seal on us. A spiritual seal saying, okay, this is my daughter. This is my daughter. She is the apple of my eye. I'm willing to give her mercy and grace and repentance. And I see she's a merciful sister. I'm going to bless her. But that's what a signet looks like. And we want this, we want the signet of your how about you shy. We want that stamped on our foreheads. Okay. We want that. We need that to make it into the kingdom. So we can't neglect arms. We can't neglect arms. So I'm gonna get sorry, 40. This is the book of Sirat, chapter 40. Brethren in help are against time of trouble, but alms shall deliver more than them both. 
So of course, yes, brothers, sisters, you know, brethren and help. Those are against the time of trouble. You know, you're in a bind, you may call up a brother, call up your husband, call up your sister. Like, okay, I need help. This does not, I need counsel, woo, or even drink of trouble. Even in that sense, the alms that we do in this life shall deliver us more than them both. More than physical carnal help from other people. Our alms deliver us more than them both. That's how important alms is to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. It needs to be important to us. Because whatever's important to the Lord, it be important to us. Okay? Speaking to myself as well, of course. So, I'm first and most high. Let me get some of the Psalms. Of the Psalms chapter 41 and verse 1. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Oh, praise the Most High. So let's just reiterate what the, the other precept I brought out was saying. So the Lord is going to deliver us out of trouble. If we put in the work now, but take care of the poor, because this is a commandment to take care of the poor. This is a commandment is in the law. We have to take care of the poor. We have to consider the poor. We gotta be merciful. And look out for those that are struggling in this thing. Not just for the reward, but just because if we say that we're followers of Christ, Christ came to be a minister. He was as a servant. He served us. He gave his life for us. So how much more us being followers of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, helping and considering the poor? We got to. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. Let me get that. Let me get that law real quick. I'm going to start at 7. If there be any, Slakia, if there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother, but thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth. Hey, you gotta open your hand wide. Don't be stingy with it. Don't be stingy with it because it's here today, it's gone tomorrow. You can't, we can't take none of this with us. So something I like to say that my beautiful sister, Z, Zara, she told me this one day and it always stuck with me. She said, you got to be willing to give because, you know, the way she saw it and how I now offer this one her saying that. Now, I try to see it as nothing that we own is ours. Everything that we have is because of the most high. The reason we got something to put on, some clothes, everything that we eat, where we stay, who we have in our lives, who we don't have in our lives our cars that we drive, our transportation, whatever it is, all of this, everything is only because you have Hashem Yahweh Shai. So it's not really ours. So we shouldn't feel so, oh, this is mine. Oh, this is mine. You know, we should feel willing to give five, ten, or however, sufficient for his need, depending on what it is. You know, and even in the spirit too. Fully give, fully give with everything we can in us as much as we possibly can. Of course, using wisdom, don't, you know, completely go broke. <laughs> Try to somebody else. Now y'all in a similar situation, but, you know, give sufficient to their need. If you can do it, do it. Neglect not alms. But let me get this in First Samuel because it can happen to any of us. It can happen to any of us, and we, I'm sure, all you said is I can speak for myself. Shoot, it's been rough. It's been rough, you know, stepping into adulthood. You know, there's ups, there's downs. 
But, you know, sometimes you'll be at a point where you ain't had no money coming in like that for months, weeks, whatever. And it'd be rough. And when people reach out and they, you know, send you money or they're even praying for you and fasting for you, you know, helping you out on whatever that looks like in a specific situation, it really means a lot. And that could just be the meaning of that sister going even harder for the Lord. It's like, dang, that sister helped me out when I really, really needed it. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I was going to make it. But that sister came through. That's all praise to the most high. How about you now, shy? And now I want to help somebody like somebody helped me. You know? Even when even when in the world you hear these, you know, I'm in the Starbucks line, the lady, you pull up. I'm just using Starbucks for a random example, but you pull up. So and so has paid for your order. The, the person in front of you paid for your order. Do you want to pay for the person behind them? And you got jokes, people on jokes on the internet, like, mm, that got nothing to do with me. But <laughs> the moral of the story is that person be really feeling like that. That literally makes somebody's whole day, somebody's whole week, probably. So we can't neglect these things. It's very, very important. But let me get this in first. Thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, the Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. Verse seven. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set him among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and He has set up the world upon them. So the Lord, he he makes us poor, he makes us rich, he brings us low, he brings us back up. You know, everything is of the Lord. And in that time, the most high can be making a brother or sister poor just so he can lift them up again. So he can show them, hey, you need to rely on me. You need to, you know, do X, Y, Z. The most high does everything for a reason and for a season. So all praise to the most high for that. And I want to get some accounts of our four fathers and our four mothers and how they dealt with, you know, giving alms and how they were known for alms. Because it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And when, if we don't know our lives and we have to be martyrs for the Lord, we want to have a good report for our lives. We want to have a good report for our lives for when we're here. Let me check on the back. But come on, we want to have a good report for our lives. So this is Acts chapter 9, verse 36. It's going into the sister Talitha, body former. Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. We have to sit and meditate on this. We have to meditate on this. If, Lord forbid, you know, Lord forbid, but if something were to happen to us, what would be said of us? What name do we leave? Will people say, yeah, that sister, she was a mighty sister. You know, she did everything she could, serve the Lord. You know, she... She had good work. She was sewing, cooking, cleaning. She was submissive. She did this and that. She gave off D. She always helped me out. You know, she was, you know, praying, fasting. You know, what what will be said of us? What will be said of us? And I'm going to keep going down this mighty account. And it came to pass in those days as she was sick and died. Whom, when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydia was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. So they're saying, Peter, hey, come on. Come on. They loved, they loved that sister. She was my sister. Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. And 
It doesn't always have to be money. It doesn't always have to be money. It could be clothes too. The Mari sister, Tabitha, or Gay Dorcas, she made coats, garments, and people are coming. Widows are coming, crying, crying, grieving, and showing like, hey, like this is what she made. Like, you know, you gotta really picture this thing when you're reading the scriptures, man. They come in and bring like, dang, I remember she made this for me. Man, it meant so much. You got Mari sisters in this thing. They making baby blankets for sister. They got purses, hats, you know, all types of stuff. These are beautiful, good words. These are also alms. So, there you know. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. And turning into the body said, Tabitha, rise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one sign in a town. That's my account. Mighty, mighty, mighty account. It's a beautiful thing. These are the, this is what we got to look up to, you know? This is what we got to look up to, having them good works. And this next account is about Cornelius, which is our people, not a thing. Contrary to popular belief, because he feared the most high, and he prayed to God always, you know, the most high. He didn't hear prayers of sinners. So, this is Acts chapter 10 and verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man. Devout. Let's look up devout really quick. Really quick. Let's look up devout. Having or showing deep religious feeling or commitment. We got to have a deep commitment to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Deep commitment. And one that feared the Most High with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to the Most High always. What he do? He gave much alms to the people. He gave much alms to the people. And I'm not going to read the whole account, but y'all yeah, can get into it. But point of the story is he was he was favored. He was favored by the Most High. He even had an angel of the Most High come to him. So, you know, the Most High was dealing with this man. The Most High was dealing with this man. He was devout, very committed to Yahweh Bashan Shai. One that feared the Most High. So, you know, let's keep it some commandments, law such commandments. He gave much alms to the people. That's important in praying to the Most High always. So, we can't neglect alms, y'all. We can't neglect alms. Now, I'm going to get, um, let me get Tobit. That's Tobit. He has a beautiful, mighty story as well. Okay. Let's start at verse one. So, Tobit made an end of praising the Most High. And he was eight and fifty years old when he lost his sight. So he was blind. Tobit lost his sight. But it was restored, which was restored to him after eight years. Eight years. This man could not see nothing. Nothing. Nobody, no nothing. Nothing. He couldn't see. And he gave alms. And he increased in the fear of the Lord. How and praised him. So all praise to the most high. This is how we got to be moving. How much more so us? Tobit praised the most high. He praised the most high when he was restored his sight. And how much more so us? We were blind. We were like people walking in the dark. We were walking in darkness. No sight. Can't see. Couldn't see the most high's marvelous light. But then the Most High had mercy on us. He restored our sight to us, restored to us our heritage, restored unto us these laws and commandments after however many so years. So our praise the Most High. So now that we have our sight, we need to be giving alms. We need to be increasing in the fear of the Lord and praising the Most High. Call you how about you now, Shai? So with that, I'm going to get chapter four. Get more into alms. 
synopsis, verse 7, give alms of thy substance. And when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious, neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of Yahweh shall not be turned away from thee. So we don't want Yahweh Shem Shai to turn away from us. We got to give alms of our stuff, of our substance. We can't be stingy with stuff that we have. We can't be stingy with our gifts. If we know it can help somebody, we got to do it with love and sincerity and in truth. We can't do it being like, oh, you know, whatever. Who the woo wicked spirit might hop on us to make us be envious and not want to give or to be like, oh, well, I don't need to give it them shoes. I need this money because I need to do, do. No, we can't be moving in that spirit. We can't be moving in that spirit. We can't be selfish. We can be greedy. So, verse 8. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. So, if you have an abundance, if you got it, give it. If you got it, give it. But if thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. So, yeah, you know, we're not rich. You know, we regular day good people. We got regular, you know, folks got nine to five, you know, regular full-time job, you know. But, hey, you got a 10 $15 to set aside every check to give an alms, boom, there you go. Or even like we were talking about earlier, spiritually, going harder, praying, asking us for prayers requests, fasting versus, hey, sis, you want to fast with me? Hey, you want you need me to fast for you? Whatever the case is, hey, do it. If thou has abundance, give it accordingly. If thou has a little, give according to that. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. So in that day when we need Yahweh Shai, when we need our good works to speak for us, in a sense, in the day of judgment, this is the way to do it. Give it alms. In addition to following all such commandments, of course, but this is a part of it. This is a commandment to give alms. This is how we lay up a good treasure for ourselves. Verse 10, because that alms doth deliver from death. Delivers from death. Serious business. If something delivers us from death, we better be trying to get into it. Get into it. And suffer it not to come into darkness. For alms is a good gift unto all that give it. Not to some, oh, only this person. This person give alms, and yeah, they get blessed from the most high, but, you know, I gave alms, and I'm just out here. I'm just forsaken. No. No. It says, for alms is a good gift unto all that give it in the sight of the most high. So, call me how about you? I'm sorry for that. So, I wrote down some ways, some different ways that um, you can give alms. Let's lock it up. Let me go back to my screen. So, alms are a little bit of a few different ways. A few different ways. So, we can give clothes. You know, you might be a sister that you might be like me. You know, some stuff just ain't fit. How it's supposed to fit no more after pregnancy or whatever the case may be. And we have some extra clothes. They might they got fringes on it. They modest. You know, they, you know, whatever the case may be. You can give that to a sister. You know a sister, she just came in the truth. She don't really got no mind school like that. Hey, sis, you need a, a skirt? You need um a shirt? You know, some kind of like, here, I got some. I can't fit in no more. You can have it. Boom, arms. It ain't cost you no money. It ain't cost you no nothing. It, it's very little, very minimal, just to help somebody. Another thing, giving dinners. Giving leftover food, you know, to the poor. Or, you know, you know, a sister, you know, she might be going through it, you know, might not have no groceries or might not be able to do groceries, you know, for whatever case may be, might just have a baby, whatever case is, you know, you got some leftover food, you and your family, you know, y'all taking care of, okay, let me go bring a plate to so-and-so. Alms, all praise the most high. You can make something, you can crochet something for some a sister or somebody or fringes, you know, making seat seats. These are things you can do. And they also help that person that receives it to better follow the law such commandments. So you have a shy. 
So that's Maggie as well. Bring you water and snacks to people for camp. If you're a sister, you know you got a congregation, and that's a way for you to give alms. Make it your men of the Lord, especially right now. It's hot as I don't know what. Bring it cold water, bring it some fruit, you know, snacks, you know, stuff from the Lord, maybe a fan, whatever. Hats, tents, whatever. Those are things you can do. And of course, you know, sending money. Sending money always helps in this captivity. Things are expensive. It's not what. We're all trying to make ends meet. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to give money. Money can be kind of touchy. But the most I will always make sure that we have what we need. Always, 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 always. And I'm going to pull this phrase up on how we give. How do we give? When we're giving alms, how should we do it? This is the book of Matthew chapter 6. And start verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. So you don't want to do alms just to be like, oh, yeah, that sister. Oh, yeah, she, she did this, this, and then. Oh, yeah, look her on the pestle give her preeminence. No, no. That's not the right spirit you want to be moving in. You don't want to do something just so folks will praise you and be like, oh, sister, you, you saved my life. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, everybody come look. This sister helped me out. Or you got the phone out like people be doing in the world. Oh, look, I'm giving this plate to the homeless. There you go. To the poor, there you go. Taking a picture. No. No, that's not why we do it. That's not, that's off. No. You will have no reward. We will not have no reward with Yahweh Shemashah if we do that. If we do things to be seen in men. Verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right doeth. So when you give alms, like say you cash up somebody a certain amount of money, or like even if it's on like a regular level, like a lot of the times there are people they like to do GoFundMe's for there's like somebody died, they needed to raise money, or you know, it's a health condition or something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And they give you the option. They give you the option. And I feel like it's a test. I always think to myself, like, it's definitely a test. Like, you know, should you put your name or should you not? Because um, when you do go funny, for those who don't know, it tells you so-and-so has given a donation of so-and-so amount. Or it can say unknown or anonymous or something like that gave so-and-so amount. You want to be that sister that is anonymous. Be anonymous. To big a long story short, be anonymous when you give alms. You know, try to be as discreet as possible. You don't want to put nobody out. You don't want to make nobody feel embarrassed, or you know, you don't want to put put nobody in a situation. So if you can be low key with it, be as low key as possible with it. Let not that left hand know what that right do it. Let that be between you and the sister. And then this is verse four: that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. So you do this in secret, we do them all in secret, the Most High is gonna reward us in secret, openly, not a secret. He gonna see it in secret, but he gonna reward us openly. So the Most High is gonna see, okay? That sister, she was merciful to her. her okay, I'm gonna reward her openly. I'm gonna bless her with a more meek spirit, a more kind spirit, you know? I'm gonna make sure she's taken care of in this area. This thing she's been praying on, I'm gonna make sure she's handled, you know, stuff like that. So, I'll pray some more for that. I'm gonna get, get this mark. Well, first, I'm gonna get this because you want to be a cheerful giver. Cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity for the most I love the cheerful giver. So whatever you decide to give, do as much as on your spirit. 
And it says, as according as he purposes in his heart, as much as you feel in your spirit, give. Give. Because most of us are cheerful giver. Don't do nothing that's going to you and be like, dang, I shouldn't have gave a sister that much money. Dang, I shouldn't have did this, did that. No. Most of us don't want that. He doesn't want a grudgingly giver. Nobody is going to be, oh, dang. I regret that, this, that, like, dang, why did I do that? Maybe I shouldn't have did that. No. The most I love is a cheerful giver. The most I love is a cheerful giver. So just imagine if the most high was like that with us. You know, he, mm, do I really want to help her out? Do I really want to make sure that, you know, they don't get put out of their apartment? I know they got division. No, like, no, the Most High is very merciful, offers to the Most High, and He always makes a way out of nowhere as long as we're abiding in His will and His commandments. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. He's so, 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 so merciful, and that's why we gotta follow after Him. That's why He gives us these scriptures as well, so we can meditate on it and be better servants of Him. So, um, let me get Mark chapter 10. In verse 21. And it reads, Then Yahawashai, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. So, if you don't know about this, you know, we got... Okay. I'm gonna just read the whole account because it's really my account. I wasn't planning on reading it, but I'm gonna read it. Let me see. I'm gonna start. Hmm. I'm gonna start at 14. But when Yahushua saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter it therein. He and he took it, so like it, and he took them up in his arms and put his hands on them, upon them, and blessed them. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked, "Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life?" And Yahushua said unto him, "Why callest thou me good? There is none." man good but one that is god thou knowest the commandments do not commit adultery do not kill do not steal do not bear false witness defraud not honor thy mother the father and thy mother and he answered and said unto him master all these have i observed from my youth so right here the boy the little child right here is asking like what else can i do what else can I do? I keep the law, such commandments. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Is a certain is true. Following you. How do I get the command? How do I? Oh, it's like it. How do I get the kingdom of heaven? And how should I be answering him? Here he goes to the answer. Then how should I beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever so, whatsoever thou hast. So like, yeah, I'm sure these words. And give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. So we can't be like him. We can't be like him. We can't be keeping every single thing to the T. I pray, I fast, I do this, I do that. I'm keeping all such commandments on my fringes. I got my spell. You know, I got this going on, this going on. But we're not willing to give away the things that we have. We gotta be willing to sacrifice. We gotta be willing to sacrifice. We gotta be selfless. Yeah, how much I he showed the ultimate selfless act of giving his life for us. Wicked people. A wicked nation, a stiff necked people. So if we say that we're gonna take up our cross and follow Yahweh Shai, we gotta be willing to give some of these things away. We gotta be willing to be like, okay, whatever. You, you girl, you can have that. You can have this little chain or whatever. What I, the most I got it. The most I got it. The most I got you, sis. The most I got me. The most I willing. You know, be good. Whatever I got, 
you got through the spirit, Lord willing. Lord, and that is something that we got to pray on more. It's not an easy thing. Sometimes it can be hard. Definitely something we got to pray on. But ultimately, you know, all things can be done through your passion and all shine. All things, all things, all things. And I'm going to get two more precepts. And I'm going to close them up. For the most part, he'll give us everything we need and need. Everything that's needful in due season. All right. Ooh, went too far. This is Sarah 39 and 33. All the works of the Lord are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season. So most probably give every needful thing in due season. He will bring that blessing in right on time. He will make sure that he's looking at what? The most high is a just God. We gotta remember this. If you're looking out for your brothers to showing true love, why wouldn't the most high take care? You make sure you strike. The most high, he's just to remember our righteousness. And that's you know that's how we build up our bank, our bank in the uh, the kingdom of heaven, by giving good alms. And the most high is gonna take care of us. He will give every evil thing in due season. So all the work of the most high are good. Call y'all by Shmuel Shai. This is gonna be my closing precept. Over the most high for this lesson, I definitely needed it. I pray the one that resonates with y'all. This is Haraq chapter forty three and verse thirty. And it reads, I'm going to get 29. The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous is his power. When you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can. As much as you can. For even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength. Be not weary. For you can never go far enough. So there's always so much more that we can do in this truth. And one of those things is giving alms. 